Now, if you've been on the channel before, you'll know that we love the idea of food toys. If uh, you know, you're spending some time indoors with your dog, a food toy can be a great way for them to use their brain, do some problem solving, as well as just a fun pastime so you can spend some time with your dog and they can get some entertainment from it. Uh, we actually love the idea of food toys so much that we've posted a couple videos of how to make your own food toys. On a recent trip to a local pet store, I discovered this Kong Gyro and this Starmark Treat Dispensing Chew Ball. Today, we're gonna go head to head and see which one of these is the best for your energetic dog. I'm Ken Steep and welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now if this is your first time on the channel and you consider your dog a member of the family, then hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you spend some quality time with your four-legged family member. So let's talk about first impressions. Now this Kong Gyro and this Chew Ball, they're both size large. So I, I would imagine that they are uh, aiming at the same size uh, of dog when they're selling these. And we know that Kong uh, has a long history of making great dog products. Uh, it seems pretty well made. It's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty substantial material um, and it's really hard. Now this, I, I'm less familiar with the Starmark line of dog toys, uh, but this treat dispensing chew ball, it's quite soft. You know, it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite a rubbery sort of feeling ball. And it, it, right here it says that the product is virtually indestructible. Now anytime I see that, I have to wonder how indestructible it is. I immediately think of our 13 year old black lab named Deegan, who is a very intense chewer and there aren't many things in this world that she can't destroy if we don't supervise some of that chewing so I don't want you to think that uh, you know you can just leave this with your super intense chewing dog and it's not gonna get ruined these are interactive toys you know these aren't chew toys that I just leave with the dog for them to play with on their own. Uh, an interactive toy requires some supervision. Um, maybe something like a Kong, you know, the, the classic Kong. Uh, it's, uh, you know, three sort of rings all together. If you haven't seen one, I, I, I don't know how you've not seen one at this point, um, but I'll put a picture of one up here. Those Kongs are, are, you know, require less supervision. You can leave a Kong like that, Kong like that as a chew toy, but these are interactive toys. You're gonna to be doing, playing with these with your dog. The other thing that caught me uh, when I read it was that it helps prevent destructive boredom behaviors. I think that's a pretty big claim for a toy to make. I think the best thing you can do for a dog who is uh, exhibiting destructive boredom behaviors is give them information. It isn't reasonable to think that this, giving your dog this toy to play with is going to stop them from chewing on your shoes. Your great information is what's gonna stop them from chewing on your shoes. Now the idea behind both of these guys is that we can take them apart. Uh, in the Kong's case, you twist off the ball, twist it in half, and then place some appropriately sized treats in there. And in the uh, chew ball, you can sort of adjust the size of the opening, which I thought was pretty cool that you can, you know, use different sized treats for different sized dogs. And also, you know, make it a little bit um, easier or more difficult for the treats to actually come out of the toy, which, you know, you can sort of cater to whatever your dog's experiences with the toy. So I thought that was kind of a great idea for the chew ball. All right, so I've loaded these up and I've tested them out a little bit to make sure that they're both gonna dispense food. So let's bring in our first tester. So our first tester today is gonna to be Beeline. Now Beeline isn't super motivated by food. She likes food and she will certainly work for food, but I think she'd prefer toys most of the time. So uh, we're gonna see what Beeline thinks. And then after this, maybe you've got a dog who, uh, you know, would much prefer food. So I'm gonna grab one of our dogs that also really likes food and see if there's a difference in how they play with the toys. So uh, let's get started. And I'm gonna bring you guys right on top of the action here with the, uh, the handheld camera. But you can see, we'll introduce this to B. We'll show her that there's some treats in it. She can smell that there's some something inside. She's just not sure what yet. Oh, and you see there's already a bit of a pay out there. Good. We'll just watch her sort of problem solve here. Oh, she's figuring it out that when she rolls the ball, food, it will come out of it. I, can, I know there's a couple more in there. So look at how quickly she's figured that out. Now the thing that I don't love about this is that it just sort of rolls away. Now if Beeline were a little bit more intense of a player, she might uh, she might be rolling that you know into a wall. She's definitely focused on the toy. Now I see that it's out of treats, so we're gonna have to reload it. Okay, so round two with our treat ball. Let's see what she does and see how quickly she figures out what's how to play with this toy. So it, it is and this may be partially my fault for cutting out the. Uh, the holes on the chew ball, but it's you know really spitting out those toys pretty freely. But I feel like it would be difficult to uh, have the toys or have the treats come out if it weren't a specific size. Now what I do notice is that she's not chewing on the toy. She's really understands that that 
This toy will spit out treats if she rolls it. The beeline is very excited to play this. Okay, B. Now I do like the idea that this is rolling very far. I do like the idea that, you know, she's playing with it in a little more enclosed space. You can see she got a treat out of it there. I think for, you know, those dogs who get really excited and flinging that ball around, or if you have a smaller space. Today I've chosen to work on our Head Start for Puppies haul. Uh, it's a nice wide open area and I thought I could really see, let be loose and see what she did with this toy. But you can see that the Kong version of the food dispenser toy hasn't, uh, you know, rolled around. She, she's stayed in a pretty, a much smaller area. Next up, the tiny poodle. Now Hippie is much more interested in food than she is in toys. She's also quite interested in climbing on my shoulder right now. But we'll see what Hippie's experience is with these toys. And you can see this intensity. We'll see if she has the same intensity when she's trying to get the treats out. Now the one thing I noticed about this chew ball is that it was delivering the treats quite quickly and it may have been, uh, you know, because I had cut the hole too big in the side of the ball, but um, I thought to make sure that this test was relatively accurate, I went to our store in our training facility here and I got some much bigger treats. You can see, I don't know how well you guys can see those, but they're a lot bigger than the uh, pieces uh, of food that I was using before. So I'm going to put these in the chew ball and see if there's a difference. So this is, um, this is interesting to see Hippie struggling a little bit with this toy. I think she needs to understand that food will come out of this like it did the last one. So I'm just going to help her a little bit and see if she can connect those two things. Now again, this may be part of the, uh, the toy drive here. Hippie, get it, get your toy. She has, you know, a lower toy drive than uh, Hippie, uh, than Beeline did. So what we're seeing is a little bit less, she's a little bit less responsive to get the treats from the toy. So she needs a little bit more coaching. There you go, that's a big payout for her. Next up is our Labrador Retriever named Deacon. Deacon looks pretty excited to play with this toy. Okay. Come on. Well, there she goes. So she, the first thing she tried to do is carry the ball, and I think she's discovered that treats can come out of it if she moves it around. But rather than roll it, she just seems to be squeezing it and picking away at it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Oh, well, now she's just, I think she's quite content just carrying, carrying the toy and she's uh, lost interest in the fact that it's actually dispensing treats for her. She makes her way around, she's discovering the treats, but I think she'd be just quite content carrying it and chewing on it. Let's see if she has a different experience here with the Kong toy. See, it's actually dispensing treats pretty quickly. And I think she's figured it out. So this is what I'm talking about with Deegan being an intense chewer. I need to keep her from, you can see that, she's already you know, put quite a dent in it. So this is something, you know, I wouldn't leave this with Deegan for her to chew on, but I would, uh, you know, uh, be there to discourage, leave it, good. I would discourage any time she started to chew on it. So this might not be, uh, you know, a great toy for a dog who's really mouthy, really loves to chew things. Deegan, drop it. Good girl. Let's get to the shootout. Now, if you have a dog who loves food but isn't crazy about toys, um, maybe this is a better option for you. Um, now, keep in mind, I had cut the kibble so that it would just fit in and out of here, and I found that you know those unusual shapes of the treats that I used in the second uh, or maybe the third uh, example, they were more difficult to get out. But if you have a dog that isn't super duper motivated by toys, this is a good one because it's really simple to use. It doesn't require a lot of problem solving. They just need to roll it around but with this toy you know you do need th this will if you have a super energetic dog high energy they are going to be rolling it all over the place they are going to be uh, you know racing it around the house where the Kong requires a little bit more thought it requires you know a little bit more interaction your dog needs to understand uh, you know that they can interact with these toys flip it around roll it around 
and uh, that it will eventually pay out. But if you find that your dog starts to stall on a toy like this, you need to help them. You need to show them, you know, that if I roll it, some food is gonna pop out. Now you saw Hippie Shake got a little bit frustrated with it because she's not a super toy motivated dog and she doesn't really get uh, great satisfaction from engaging with toys. That's something that we've trained her to do. She, you know, she'll have a lot of fun tugging and she'll have a lot of fun playing with a toy with us. But when we leave a toy independently on the ground, unless it's something like a, you know, like a, a nylon bone, she's just not, doesn't get great satisfaction from playing with it. So really take into consideration what kind of dog you've got. Does your dog love food, but maybe not love toys that much? And maybe consider how big an area do you have? This Kong really didn't move around the ground as much as the ball did. The ball would just naturally roll, you know, all over the place. Do you have a high energy dog that will zoom this around the house where this might move a little bit more slowly? Do you have a dog who needs this kind of, uh, you know, uh, motion and uh, really it, it, it activate that chase drive for your dog that a toy like this is gonna provide. It's gonna get them more excited about that motion and more excited about playing with the toy. But keep those things in mind before you uh, you know, go you go out and you spend $20 on one of these toys. You know that we like uh, food puzzles. We, we You know that we think it, you know, it's a fun way to spend time with your dog. And we've actually created a couple of videos on food puzzles, on making uh, food dispensing toys for your dogs, like brain games. And I'll post those in a card above, but I'll also post a link below in the description. Now, if this is your first time on the channel and you consider your dog a family member, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you spend some quality time with your four-legged family member. Beside me is a video of some homemade brain games for your dog that you'll probably enjoy watching. On that note, I'm Ken. Happy training.